of the season. I mean, what are some of your biggest takeaways that you've had for yourself personally this year? Um, I think uh, some of the biggest things that I've, um, you know, just things that I've realized about myself and uh, just where I can take my career and um, like the levels that I, I believe that I can reach. I think this year was a, a really good stepping stone for me um, to continue to get better. And uh, I've gotten better every year of my career. Um, you know, from a standpoint of just like playing basketball, you know, you may look at numbers, you look at this and they fluctuate, but, um, you know, I've gotten better as a basketball player every year and I, I don't see why, you know, over the next four or five years, I can't keep doing that. So um, realizing that this year and, and, and understand how much more um, I can do and what I need to do, I'm excited for it, so. What do you think went wrong for this team this year and led to you guys falling short of expectations? Um, you know, we just uh, we just didn't put it together. We didn't win enough games. I think we lost many games by 15 plus points that we had leads, and um, um, that really really hurt us. You know, health hurt us. You know, not saying that's an excuse because. If you look at a team like the Pelicans, they've been just as hurt as us, and somehow they're 42 and 39, and looking really positive going into it. But um, you know, we've had a bunch of things, and we—you could say that we kind of really haven't, you know, meshed as a group as much as um, we have at certain times during the year. Um, you know, on the court speaking, but you know, it's life, I guess tough it's 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 kind of disappointing it's very disappointing it's very disappointing very you know kind of embarrassing because you understand like who we have on this team and we weren't able to help this organization get there it's, it's, uh, it's definitely tough when you, when you guys kind of were all together what did you kind of make of how it all fit and just how it all played out i think you guys i think you brown yeah. and jb were 16 and 19 um, well, I mean, I think it looked good. I think we, you know, still didn't have enough time to fully um, get going. Um, you know, we live in this world where, um, you know, the people that report our game and the people that watch our game, they believe that, you know, 35 games is enough or um, a season is enough of work to see what you have. But it's really not, you know, I think a prime example um, and I'm just giving an example of like this analogy in my head because you look at Boston and people are trying to break that team up um, but they've been to like six conference finals or finals um, you know by, by gelling you know what I mean so you know it's one thing to really look at our situation and you know say oh, okay we're 16 and 19 but you know we live in a society where we look at headings instead of context and um you know, I definitely thought there was something there, for sure. Kyle, just going back to what you were saying earlier about getting better, what does getting better look like for you over the next few years? And overall, what do you think next for Kyle Kingsman? Um, I truly believe that just the sky is the limit for me. I think that, um, you know, I'm so, you know, irrationally confident in myself uh, that I just believe I can do, you know, uh, be one of the guys in the league, you know, be a top player. And I think, you know, over my career, like I said, I've gotten better. And, um, you know, I think, you know, I can be better as a leader. I can be better as a man. It's so many different things I can continue to prove. Like, I'm only 27. So. Because you've told us your kind of priority, what you would look for in a next home. But has that changed since we talked to you? What is it, what is it now? What are you looking for in the team? Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to be, you know, myself, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, get better every year. You know, it's not about money. You know, I'm going to get paid regardless anywhere in here too. So, um, it's about, you know, can I come into work every day and be my best version of myself? Um, you know, can I help lead guys? Can I make other players better? Um, can I light up rooms? Like all those things matter when you're trying to be successful. 
And um, I believe for myself, when I'm like that, um, I make everything better. So, how, how does the how does the fact that you already have a, a ring factor into the way you prioritize winning? Like, does maybe it make you really want to be a contender, or does it maybe give you a little bit the opportunity for some to practice some patience? Um, I think you have to have patience. I believe. Um, to certain extents, what you know, guys like Dame, um, you know, even Brad, you know, those guys where they talk about the grass is not always greener and stuff. Um, and just because you go to a contender doesn't mean you're going to win a championship right away because health could be a factor. Sounds good, looks good on paper, but does it look good on the court? Like those things matter, but at the same time, um, I am trying to win, and I, and I, I, I do want to, um, you know, compete at high levels. You know, that's why I play this game because I'm a junkie and I love it. And life's always better when you're winning. So I think it's a it's a balance to that type, type of question. Um, but um, you know, with me having a ring, I understand that, and I understand, you know, uh, and I, and I know how I'm approaching it. So is the right way so a lot of people will say that okay it's not about the money but given the things that you listed is it fair that you know you bring and prioritize things maybe differently than you know just purely what the say, say one more time i'm sorry so you listed a bunch of things that besides the money you know you want the fit to be there things like that yeah so i guess how does all of that go into for your prioritization what are your like top two things that you look for in a next team well i mean i just said it you know i want to continue to get better as a basketball player, um, you know, and, and having, um, you know, people that support you is very important around and, 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 and also, um, you know, I have goals and plans of where I want to see my life and, and how I'm going to get there is becoming a better basketball player, leading guys, making other guys better and winning. So, um, like, that's my, that's why I prioritize. In, in your two seasons here, do you felt like in the past two years you've been able to work on those things to your liking? 100%. 100%. I've grown tremendously in these past two years. And, uh, you know, uh, Wes, Tommy, Ted, they've all gave me this platform to do this and even to be in this type of situation. So um, I definitely see it here and it has been because they do support me. So. What do you think is missing from this team? What does this team need? What does this team need um, to get some wins? You know, I, I, it's, it's easy to be like, oh, this team needs a point guard, we need a center, we need to do two or three or four. But I mean, every you have to understand this, though. When, when I've been in the NBA to, long enough to like talk to people and understand, like, everywhere is going to be dysfunctional. Everywhere is going to have its issues. That's every workspace in, in America and the world. So, you know, you have to just figure out, you know, what you like, um, you know, what works and what works for the best of the group to get wins. And, um, you know, I, I don't see why, you know, it couldn't happen here. You know, you have young guys that you, you watch, you know, over the past two weeks, they've got a lot better. Um, you know, they're confident and then everybody's seen what, you know, Brad and KP and I, you know, how we play basketball. So, um, yeah, you know, there's definitely a lot to think about, but, you know, I think that's, you know, that's where I'm at, so. Speaking of the young guys, how would you assess the young talent? Um, I think it's, it's growing. I think it's, um, you look at like a guy like Johnny, and I'm very, you know, I talk about it all the time. You know, I just, I just love his confidence. I love where he started the year and, and where he's finished, because that's what matters. You know, it doesn't matter if you start basketball games, but you know, you'd rather want to be in the game when the game's on the line, right? And you know, that analogy, he finished his season really, really strong. And um, you know, to see his steps through the G League to now has been like tremendous to watch. And you watch guys like Corey taking his step. Um, you know, he's going to be a solid, you know, rotational player for probably as long as he wants in this league. You know, he plays the ball, plays basketball the right way. Gaff, Beast, like, you know, he's been coming along too. Denny, coming along. So, 
you know, it's, it's just a work in progress. Like everybody wants young guys, and I talked about it earlier about context, but you know, why are we rushing guys to come out the gate and be all-stars or, or be role players? It's hard for young players. It's very hard. You know, when I had my third year in the NBA and I had to play with LeBron, I had to play with AD and Rondo and Dwight, it's intimidating when you're playing with older players that you looked up to um, along your way trying to get to this point. So it's hard for young players to just, you know, lock in and be a role player and just play defense and only try to score off cuts and only try to score off uh, spot up threes. That's a tough job to do. But, um, you know, I believe that, uh, you know, everybody here has a, has a bright future um, if they maintain good habits and they work hard. So. What have you learned about Wes? How's he developed? Um, Wes has developed. Um, I think, um, um, and I and I told him this other day. You know, I think um, when you first came here, it was more so about understanding plays and, and making sure everybody knew the plays. Um, but but now he's really understanding um, just the little nuances of the game. Um, you know how we need to teach the young guys more about spacing and screening angles because that's what really matters. You can run, you know, Greg Pop Popovich can run the greatest plays in the world, but if, uh, you know, his players aren't space right, it's not gonna work, you know? So, um, you know, I think in that aspect and just knowing like, okay, fourth quarter comes, you know, it's going to be, you know, Brad's ball or Kuz has the ball or KP has the ball. We need to find the spacing. And um, I think that's something that he's really developed on, you know, during the season, for sure. Kuz, are there any games this season or any moments that you wish you could have that bad? Uh, yeah, every one of our 20-point lead losses. It's like seven of them or eight of them. Um, yeah, probably would have changed our season around if we were on one at least four of them. How's your ankle just kind of? I'm I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm. I've been on the court. Um, you know, the last couple of days finally, and like I'm moving really well. And um, I still have like a lot, a lot of sw swelling, but like just the, the day to day pain is going away. So it's um, a blessing. Is that something that if you guys were kind of kind of kind of gone blind, that you think you could have played the last couple? Um, as I'm like feeling now, yeah. 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 Uh, what's your individual priorities for improvement this summer for your game, your individual game? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just same thing I do every off season. I think it's been working, so I'm not going to stop what I'm doing, and really not going to change much. But just really just trying to get strong as possible, and um, you know, continue just to work on my shooting and my knowledge of the game. You know, watch a lot of playoff basketball. You know, I think uh, that's super important to my development, you know, because anytime you can watch basketball, you know, you can get better. And, um, you know, if I can do that and I can get stronger and, you know, just work on myself more as a man a little bit, um, it'll help me lead men and help me, uh, you know, accomplish what I want to accomplish. There was a lot made in the beginning of the season with you and Monte having the opportunity to play on the same team. Did that plan out to be everything you all thought it would be? No, the it did not. <laughs> I actually cannot wait till I'm not his teammate anymore. <laughs> um, no, but it was, you know, obviously, you know, you want to win for sure, but it was something that we accomplished. And, um, you know, it's, it was it was it was very it was a very fun year with him. I can say that for sure. You know, obviously us being kids growing up, and it's so funny we come in here and we we talk crap to each other, and um, you know we tell old stories about each other in front of everybody, and it's just everybody laughs and it's fun because you know we know we know the real. He knows the real. He knows Kyle. He doesn't know Coos. Like he knows Kyle. You know and. Um, I know him too, and it's just, you know it's been great. We have a great bro brotherhood too. So. Obviously, you don't want to tell specifics, but how would you describe the mood and takeaways in your exit interview with Tommy? Um, I thought it was good. Um, I mean, Tommy has the vision. He has something that he's trying to accomplish here, and he sees me a, a very big part to that. And um, you know, like I've said. Uh, couple minutes ago like 
you know, having this platform and having people support me is very huge. And, you know, I believe that he uh, believes in me, so. You mentioned Tommy's vision. Do you feel like this group is any closer to developing an identity? Uh, that's a great question. I think um, I would answer yes to that for sure. You know, just the way that, uh, you know, they've been orchestrating the young guys, um, playing with a little bit more pace. Uh, teaching them those little things that I kind of talked about a little earlier uh, because like it all looks good now right but if we were all on the court you know Gab probably wouldn't be shooting fadeaways uh, Corey probably wouldn't have the ball as much Johnny wouldn't be you know so uh, entertaining as he is right now but um, you know they can build on what they have because this is a big confidence confidence sitting tone sitting time for them to realize like, yo, I can really play in this league. Even if whatever role I have, I can play in this league. And that's a super important thing to have when you're playing against the best players in the world, so. Now that it appears you avoided disaster with the injury, what are your thoughts on the nature of the injury you had? I believe you stepped on a fan. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate. Um, it happens, it's, you know, it, like I don't feel bad or I never felt like, why is this fan's foot here? I mean, it just happens, you know, I'm, I'm really big on the universe. And, um, you, know, I, uh, you know, it's really given me time to really sit down and just like um, um, relive some of the season in my head, process things, um, process this environment, process, you know, myself and, and how, what I need to do to get better. Um, so, you know, it's, it's everything in life I look at it as a good thing. Speaking of fans, what happened with Brad in Orlando? Have you noticed the difference as sports gambling has become more legalized? Like yeah. Fans are becoming a little bit more saying stuff about parlays. Becoming, like, is it more antagonistic at all? From your yeah, passion? very. Oh, extremely. And I think um, from when I first came in to now, it's, it's even more heightened. Um, it's, it's probably more and more less players, or not less players, but it's probably more and more people today not even watching basketball games. Um, and you gotta think for athletes, like we're all humans and, and like Twitter and social media, they're very important parts to our lives because that's where we find news just like you guys. So, you know, it's always funny. And, and I, I've always had to catch myself with this because one, I really don't care about other people's opinions about me because you don't even know me, right? Um, but, you know, the parlay culture is crazy now. It's insane. Like, you have, you know, people, they don't even say hi to you or they don't even do this. They're like, hey, I got you on my fantasy team. Okay. Thanks. Like, you know, but, like, it, it's tough and, and, and because we're all human and, you know, I would never do this, but, like, you have these certain situations where, like, you have players, they go out, and, like, if you call me the B word, I'm going to be mad because I'm a human, right? And, you know, we're taught as athletes to, you know, um, you know, you, know, you can't talk back, you can't do this, but some people are human and some people don't like that. And, and, and you broke a boundary. And, for instance, you broke a, brown, a boundary with Brad. He doesn't like when people call him names or something. So he's going to, he's going to go out and do what he does as a man. And like, you know, fans have to understand that it's probably not right. It's probably not the right thing to do, but you put yourself at risk to get your cat flip. <laughs> uh, this season you launched your fashion line, and mm -hmm. uh, but what are the near top three favorite fits, game day fits so far? Me, season? this year, uh, the big um, puffable one. Um, I wear a suit on my way to the Laker game. It's at Crypto. Um, that was snazzy. And then um, I like, you know, my last like couple of weeks of fit, it's, it's have been nice, honestly. My little bench fits, I like those. What you make of Denny's? Uh... Denny's, but I'm a proud father. <laughs> a proud father. Denny's growing up. Besides working on your game, is there anything else you're looking forward to in the off season? Yeah, I got a lot of business going on. Like, life's good. Like, very grateful right now. You know, I've been getting closer to God. Uh, business is good. Real estate's good. Can't complain. Basketball's good. 
Life's, Life's good. good. Life's good. <laughs> Going back to what you were saying earlier about 35 games, how that's not enough time. Like, when is it? When is the, the sample size? Or I know that's maybe depends on the situation, but generally, as, as your experience as an NBA player, like, when is enough time to judge something? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I truly don't know because I only know what I know, and um, like. I won a championship just randomly one year because I had LeBron and AD on my team. So, like, you know, I don't really know about growth and building because you could just put some top three players on a team and win, you know. But, you know, I believe that it does take a sample size because not everybody are those guys. But, um, you know, life's all about patience. So that's all I can say about that. Besides the uh, ankle, how are the rest of your ailments? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, everything's good. My, I had a bad knee issue for a second. Not bad. I don't like to say bad, but it was, it was rough. But um, I, I'm feeling almost healthy. Obviously, you're pretty close to Denny. Just how have you assessed you know, his year three from where he started to where he's finished now? Um, I think with Denny, everything is about confidence um, and mindset. Um, we've seen many, many games when um, we're playing like lesser opponents and he, he dominates and he'll have these big games and these and it may not be big games, but, you know, he may have a game where it's like, you know, 15, nine and, and six. That's a huge game to me. That's a big game. And, um, you know, he switches his mentality too many times. And it's it's a little, like that's the thing that's inconsistent with him. And um, you know it's easy to, to pick somebody's game and why they're inconsistent. But a lot of times it's because of your mindset. And I think that you know he had a stretch of some get more games this year than last year where he put together good games. And I think he can build on that. And I think he understands that he's a better player when his mind is there and, and where he wants to be. So. Um, I thought this year was a really good year for him, just understanding that. And um, he should be able to build on that, so. Obviously, it might be an unfair question and too early to tell, but do you foresee being back here next season? It's, uh, I mean, 100% an option. Um, I, I truly, I, I'm still trying to decompress this season and decompress like myself. Um, you know, before I even get to that stuff. But um, I mean, 100%, you know, like I've had a great, great time here. Um, I've developed my game um, significantly here. And, um, you know, there's good people here. So, you know, I'd be a fool not to say there's not, it's not an option for me. So. Have, have you talked with KP at all? I mean, he also has an option and, and decide. Did, did you guys talk about it at all? Um, yeah, I mean, of course we have a conversation, for sure. Yeah. Any fun travel plans? I'm all over the globe this summer. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything you're most excited for? Um, yeah, going to Greece for my birthday. Yeah, this is exciting. But, been before? Huh? Been before? I've never been. Okay. No, never been. Good sunsets? I could only imagine. <laughs> When's your birthday? You can give you uh, right. July 24th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Leo. Oh, nice, Leo. <laughs> yes. How important is the possibility that this team could offer you a fifth year, where all other teams could only offer you a fourth? Um, I mean that's a that's a that's a blessing for sure. I think that um, it's such a, a rare thing to have. It's an opportunity that not many players have a you know opportunity to come across in their career, and. Um, is, you know, obviously it means you have more money, but it also means that like, you know, they fully believe in you and they fully, you know, expect you to be a part of whatever plans or org organization has. So, um, yeah, it's it's big time, hundred percent. You mentioned that you're obviously having conversations with KP. Just the fact that when you're talking about this group and you see promise that he might not be back, or that's up in the air, does that how does that factor into your process, your decision making? Well, I'm, I I think when you know I won't say much about our conversations, but um, I do uh, I do think you know when you're talking about you know something um, 
like this, it, it involves the entire party. You know, it's not like a, you know, if he's not here, he's not here, and then you do this. Like, that's not a real logical and realistic mindset to really look at. So, you know, it's always like with the group involved. So, that's always with the with the group involved. Involved, but it doesn't necessarily factor because it would just be too hard to factor in. It's too hard to factor like missing pieces. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, what has the importance of Delon been for the team in terms of being kind of like a, a straw who stirs the drink on the court, you know, that kind of thing? Well, I mean, he's an en energy giver. Um, he's not an energy taker. And, um, you know, he's someone that the group loves. He's someone that um, I love. Um, you know, he, he's such a great person. He's easygoing. He's super laid back. And when, he, when he's on the court, that's, that's how he is, too. And, um, you know, he does such a great things of, you know, just being a instinctual basketball player that just helps the group out. You know, some coaches probably don't like his playing style. And that's probably why he's been, you know, kind of like a journeyman because he gambles a lot. He goes for, you know, random steals and stuff. But like, you know, I think this has been a great situation for him because, um, you know, this organization has really like embraced who he is, and um, you just see how impactful he is on a nightly basis. You know, without scoring the ball, and also I think he's like seeing the way he plays is great for uh, young guys to really look at because he can really impact the game without taking more than three shots in the entire game playing 25 minutes. You know, he can you know make the right pass, be in the right spot. He can get steals and play defense and, and show you that he can make just as much of an impact on winning than scoring 20. And I think that's a valuable lesson for people. You've been a leader on this team um, this year. Coming into next year, are you looking to keep in that role? Do you want more responsibility, less responsibility for yourself? Um, I'm always on the more. I'm always on the more because I believe I can always do more. So, um, you know, that's just where I'm at from a confidence standpoint and who I believe I am, so always more. How has it been playing alongside Brad? I guess how would you describe him as a player and what he means to this franchise? You know, I think it's been good. I think uh, we've shown people that, um, you know, we can play together um, and we don't get in each other's ways. Um, I think that's something that's very, very important when um, you have two guys that want the ball. I wouldn't say need the ball because he can play off the ball and I can play off the ball. So I would say want. And, um, you know, it's 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 really easy because you have to pick and choose who you want to put your best perimeter defender on. And um, personally, me, I, I like that because, you know, it may be my night tonight. And if, if I'm rolling and I have a hot stretch, they're going to start putting the best player on me. And now it's your turn to go crazy, too, you know. And uh, I just like having that um, that synergy. You know, I think it's really good. So it seems like from an efficiency standpoint, it really benefits both of you guys as well. Yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, I'm, he had his most efficient year ever this year. Yeah.